Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another quick edit video. With this image today, I want to try something different and convert it into a dramatic black and white photo with lots of contrast. For the editing, I will be using Adobe Photoshop. That means I'm doing the raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. And then later, maybe I also use the Nick Collection plugin. So before I start, here are the before and after images. All right, here we are in the camera raw editor. Before I start with the basic stuff, let's go into the optics tab and activate the lens corrections real quick. And then I'm also changing the geometry. Since you can see those pillars aren't really vertically straight and I want to fix that. And for this, I can simply push up the vertical slider. All right, and that looks much better. Now you can see there are some gaps right here on the corners of the image. Uh, I'm going to fill them later in Photoshop. Also, you can see I have already cropped the image. Otherwise, there would be a much, much bigger gap at the top of the image. All right, then let's go to the basic stuff. To turn this into a black and white image, I'm simply hitting this button right here. And then we can start with the basic stuff. So you might think the white balance temperature doesn't have an effect on black and white images since those sliders are all about the color of the image, but actually it changes the contrast if you play around with it a little bit. And for this reason, I want to drop the temperature slightly. Okay. Now the exposure does actually look pretty good. You can see we don't have any over or under exposure right here. So let's start adding some contrast. For the next step, I want to increase the whites. All right, you can see those two adjustments already did have a great impact on the image. Uh, let's add some more detail to the spot walk in the foreground. And herefore I can simply increase the texture, which works really, really good here. Also, let's add some clarity all right, nice. Then there are a few local adjustments. I want to start by using the radiated filters. And here I have applied one just for the sky, which I want to darken, since right now the sky is just this white rectangle and that's not very interesting. So let's drop the exposure. So this will give us this nice gradient in the sky. Then let's jump to the radial filters. Here you can see I have applied one for the horizon and that's because I want to brighten up this area and add some subtle glow effect here. And for this reason, let's increase the blacks. Let's also increase the whites to make it really, really bright there. Then let's also carefully drop the dehaze. Okay, nice. Then one last radial filter for the boardwalk in the foreground since I want to have even more detail in here. Again, I'm going to simply increase the texture and add some clarity. And that's it for the local adjustments. Then I have applied a simple S-curve. So let's create a point right here in the middle and drag down the shadows a little. And for this image, I also want to raise the black point, which will just give the blacks this faded look. And then let's also apply one more point for the highlights. And that's it for the tone curve. And of course, I'm also sharpening the image. And in the color grading tab, I actually want to apply a cold color tone for the shadows. Just very, very subtle. So let's drop the saturation. Okay, and then finally, let's also add some vignetting in the effects tab and just drop this slider. All right, and that's it for the adjustments in the camera raw editor. Then let's open it in Photoshop. First, of course, I want to fill those gaps. Therefore, I'm using the lasso tool and make a rough selection around them. Then I'm hitting Shift F5 and select content aware, just hit OK then. Also, there are a few sensor spots, so I'm using 
the spot healing brush and just brush over those spots. Alright, then I want to add some further glow on the horizon. So let's create a new layer and switch the blending mode to soft light. Then I'm grabbing the brush tool and first I want to drop the brush opacity down to around 20% I think. And let's set the foreground color to white. And now I'm carefully brushing in a few times just in the center of the image. All right, let's apply another layer and this time go with the hard light blending mode. And let's further drop the brush opacity, also decrease the brush size and in the very center paint in a few times. All right, that's nice for now. Then let's group them up by selecting those two layers and hitting this little folder icon. And then I'm applying a layer mask on this folder and with a black brush I'm masking out the glow over the boardwalk. Okay, then let's merge those two layers. And now I think I actually want to do some dodging and burning. And for this reason I'm going to use the TK panel which allows me to create layer masks. So I'm duplicating this layer with the TK panel. I want to target those highlights in the water. That means I need to create a layer mask for the lights. Something like this for example. So everything that's above 50% gray will be affected by the dodging and burning. So this layer mask should do it. I could go a little darker here, but let's give this one a try. So let's activate layer mask, click on lights too. TK panel now has created this layer mask. Now all I need to do is to create a new layer, create a clipping layer by holding down the alt key and clicking between those two. And now I'm changing the blending mode to overlay. Again, grab the brush tool and then I just carefully paint over the water surface. All right, I think that's already enough. I really don't want to overdo it. Maybe let's paint in in the very near foreground a little bit. All right, then let's merge everything again by selecting the layers and hitting Ctrl E. And finally, I want to get some more details out of this boardwalk. And for this reason, I'm going to use the Nick Collection plugin, Color Effects Pro 4. Here I'm using the Detail Extractor. And let's increase this slider right here. Let's also increase the contrast. Then you can see we get this nice texture in the wood. So let's apply it like this. Of course, this effect does look pretty ugly on the rest of the image, so I'm applying a black layer mask by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the layer mask icon. Then I'm using a white brush again and just paint over the foreground. And this way we get the texture in the boardwalk. And that's it for editing this black and white image. I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, then feel free to ask in the comments of this video. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you.